John Fitzgerald Kennedy, the 35th President of the United States of America, assassinated in Dallas, Texas, on Friday afternoon, November 22, 1963. JFK became the fourth President of the United States who died at the hands of the killer. Now buckle up, as we're going back in time to uncover the circumstances of JFK's death and show you exactly how it was. So, what was the reason for Kennedy to visit Texas? Great question. He basically had three goals in mind. He wanted to help raise more money for next year's presidential campaign, he wanted to begin his quest for re-election in November 1964, and he wanted to help mend political fences among several leading Texas Democratic Party members who appeared to be fighting politically amongst themselves. The trip's agenda included five stops in five cities over the two days. San Antonio, Houston, Fort Worth, Dallas, and Austin. Thursday, November 21st, one day before the assassination. 9.15 a.m. President Kennedy finished breakfast with his wife and his children. He said goodbye to his five-year-old daughter Caroline when she left for school. After the breakfast, Kennedy arrived at his office in the White House, where he held a few morning meetings before his scheduled departure to Texas. 10.50 a.m. The President, Jacqueline, and their son, John Kennedy Jr., ordered the presidential helicopter, also known as Marine One. Because John Jr. wasn't in school yet, well, he was turning three years old in a couple of days, the parents let him ride to Andrews Air Force Base, where the presidential plane, Air Force One, was waiting for the president and the first lady. 11.05 a.m. JFK and the first lady departed for a three-hour and 20-minute flight to San Antonio, Texas, on board of a customized Boeing 707 with a tail number 26000. Only a few people know that Mrs. Kennedy herself had a hand in designing the interior and exterior of the presidential plane. The previous jets were painted a garish orange, while the new ones have a sleek silver, white, and blue theme, with a presidential seal and United States of America painted boldly on the side. The same design will remain on all presidential jets for decades to come. 1.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Air Force One touches down at San Antonio International Airport, where 5,000 people have come to catch a glimpse of the President and Mrs. Kennedy. Interesting note, the standard protocol calls for the President to be the first to emerge from the aircraft. But this time, moments before the door opens, President Kennedy says, Jackie, you go first. Most people have come to see you. The move played out extremely well. The crowd's chanting, Jackie, Jackie, Jackie as she begins to descend the steps, bringing Jacqueline to Texas, where he desperately needed votes for next year's run for presidency, was a clever, strategic move. 2.40 p.m. The president partakes in the dedication of the Aerospace Medical Health Center at Brooks Air Force Base, and at 4 p.m., President Kennedy, Jacqueline, and the rest take on a 35-minute flight to Houston, where JFK will make brief remarks to the League of United Latin American Citizens and address a dinner. Six hours later, at 10.15 p.m., Air Force One departs from Houston, and at 11.05 p.m. lands at Fort Worth. They finally made it to their third and last city on the agenda for that day. Friday, November 22nd, the assassination day. 7.30 a.m., John Kennedy woke up for the very last time in his life. It was a rainy November morning. Kennedy had his light breakfast in his room, and then he headed out to the square in front of the hotel where he addressed a few thousand people who had gathered hoping to get a glimpse of the president despite the bad weather. 8.45 a.m. The president takes part in a breakfast gathering of the civic leaders of the Fort Worth Chamber of Commerce and gives a speech. Shortly after, the motorcade with president and the first lady departs to Carswell Air Force Base to take on the next flight to Dallas. It's going to be a 15-minute flight, and someone even said that it would be faster to drive up there. But political advisors want film footage and still photos of Jack and Jackie coming down the steps of the Air Force One at every city they visit. 11.38 a.m. Air Force One lands in Dallas at the Lowe Field Airport. Once again, Mrs. Kennedy heads down the ramp first, with the president a step behind. 
It's the standard routine now. There's no question that she's a big reason for these massive crowds, and the president knows it. We'll make a quick remark here. During the 1960 presidential campaign, Jacqueline was pregnant with John Jr., and thus did very little campaigning with her husband. In the three years since, the couple's popularity has grown to the point that they are idolized, like movie stars. 11.55 a.m. The presidential limousine Lincoln, codename SX100X, is ready to take JFK and his wife through Dallas. The weather conditions improved dramatically over the last few hours, and the decision was made to proceed with the convertible top off. Interesting fact, the route of the presidential motorcade through Dallas was published in Dallas Times newspaper two days prior to the president's arrival, providing far more opportunities for someone to harm the president and the first lady sitting at the backseat of the SX-100X. There were people hanging out open windows, on balconies, on rooftops. There's barely enough room for cars to pass. People screaming, delirious, with excitement, trying to break past the police to get to the president. 12.25 p.m. The motorcade makes a left turn onto Elm Street, slowing way down on a sharp turn. Maneuvering these oversized limousines must be done with caution and care. After the massive crowds they've just passed on Main Street, it's noticeably calmer in this area. A sign on the right indicates the entrance to the Simmons Freeway. The motorcade is nearly over, only a couple hundred feet left. The bullet hits the president's upper back and exits the throat. He throws his hands up to his throat and moves violently to the left. The same bullet hits Texas Governor John Connolly, who's sitting right in front of the president. Everything happens too fast for the bodyguards to react. Bang! The second bullet hits Kennedy's head. In that same instant, a vile eruption of blood, brain matter, and bone fragments sweeps out, showering over Mrs. Kennedy and across the trunk. It's the fatal wound. In the same moment, Mrs. Kennedy, covered with her husband's blood, her eyes filled with terror, is saying, My God, they have shot his head off. I have his brain in my hands. Jack, or oh Jack, what have they done? I love you, Jack. The entire motorcade accelerates rapidly and is now going at 80 miles an hour to the Parkland Memorial Hospital, where at 1 p.m. Central Center Time, some 30 minutes after the shots had been fired, the 46-year-old President Kennedy was pronounced dead. 5.58 p.m. Eastern Time. The Air Force One brought back to Washington, D.C. the 34-year-old presidential widow Jacqueline Kennedy, who by that time was no longer the First Lady, as Lyndon Johnson, the former Vice President, swore in as the new President of the United States, according to the protocol. The police will later identify the killer, the exact spot on the sixth floor of the Texas School Book Depository from where the shots had been fired. All of this will happen later on. As for the assassination of John Kennedy, this is how it was. All right, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that notification bell and you won't miss the new episodes.